Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you, Bernard, for introduction and all the organizing team for making this event happen because we need personal meetings, but we cannot show new displays on the old displays online. And that's what we do at Serial, new type of display. We are a four years old startup from Lausanne, which is uh, the epicenter of AR hardware in Switzerland. And that's why most of our team of 20 are veterans from Intel Wound and Magic Leap. And together we make a near eye light field display. And we believe it is a way more natural display for human vision than what we have otherwise. I called the talk AR needs a display revolution, but I think it's like saying that the sky is blue. We probably all know that. But I would like to put more weight on certain problems which I think are still very underestimated. And of course, I will show you how we are trying to solve that problem. So it all starts with our eye. It's absolutely amazing product of the nature. Behind the pupils, there is 70% of all the receptors which we have on our body. It's literally the window between the reality and each of us. And 90% of all the brain processing of external signals is dedicated to vision analysis. And in fact, uh, it is also around 60,000 times more efficient than any other type of input. So we need a fraction of a second to understand what I'm showing to you to a great detail. And that's why we started representing visual information artificially tens of thousands of years ago. But in the last century, we got way better. And indeed, today, we spent already more of our waking time by looking at the digital information. That's how important it is. But right now, we are facing quite dramatic change because the AR is a, our natural need for more seamless reception of the digital information. But it is not, not the incremental step in the technology. Now we are trying to represent the digital information way more realistically. Three-dimensional in context of the real things and personalized for each of us. But most of the efforts are dedicated still to the old ways. We are magnifying a flat image and placing it into a fo fixed focus lens in front of us. And this is the first big problem and reason for the revolution because our eye works like a camera lens, and it's able to focus only at one distance at a time. So either on the display or on the real object, our own hand. And that's why we can't actually see the digital content and the real things next to each other correctly. And you can try to experience the problem on your own eyes if you make a small experiment. If you close one eye, you can try to touch this text with your own hand, like this. But the moment you focus on your hand, you realize that you can't see the text. You cannot read it because it gets entirely blurred. In fact, more than that, really try that. And it is even more shocking when we put it into numbers. So most of the products promote the resolution in pixels per degree. So the optimum is some 60 pixels per degree. But this is in fact true only for a very specific situation when the eye is focused on that distance. As soon as we start focusing closer, the resolution drops drastically below 10 pixels per degree at 40 centimeters, below three pixels per degree at 20 centimeters. It's entirely unusable. This makes the personal space within our arms reach the no man's land for the flat screen based 3D visualization. And if it was not enough, the problem is even bigger. The vast majority of our 3D perception comes from stereoscopic vision. So the two eyes give us the feeling of the depth, but then the brain drives the eye focus to the same distance. But then you realize, okay, the image is actually not sharp, and the eye starts auto-focusing at the image source, which is in a different distance. And this breaks the natural harmony between vergence and accommodation which leads to an unpleasant eye strain to most people, typically within 20 minutes. And that's not very long time. So that's why we can see such images, for example, in the documentation of Microsoft HoloLens. It tells the content developers to place the content ideally more than 1.2 meters far to avoid the unpleasant feeling. 
because otherwise it gets really bad. And that's why we can get feedback from the use cases like this. Yes, meeting Metaverse is fun if you don't do it for four hours on end. That was so much time in avatar meetings. My eyes hurt and my head hurts. So what did I learn from this adventure other than I'd never recommend you do this? Well, I would summarize it that divergence accommodation conflict is actually not a nice thing. So we won't so solve this problem by the classical way, providing more and more pixels, which is the trend today, 4K displays, 8K displays. It doesn't provide the focal depth. And in fact, we don't need more pixels. In fact, we need less pixels and delivered more efficiently. But I will get back to it later. And here we have a great help from the nature, because our vision is actually by far more function of the brain than of the eye. The eye is actually a 3D scanner, and all the sensation which we have, which we think we see, is coming from the vision analysis in our brain. So in fact, the eye doesn't really need much. We don't see this picture when we look at it. In fact, if you really pay attention, you will notice that you are scanning the picture because the eye is seeing something like this. Vast majority of the field of view is almost colorblind and the resolution is very low. Only around five degrees of the field of view around the fovea is actually really good. But this is extremely important part of our eye. This is the reason why our eye is moving. We don't need moving eyes for the stereoscopic vision. We need to point the fovea to the right place. And this is also the reason why we have the focusing lens. And nature wouldn't bother with evolving the lens if it was not critically important. Because the moment you lose sharpness, even in the fovea, you lose vast majority of the information. So I dare to say that 3D displays don't need more pixels, but need a focal depth. You need to satisfy the fovea. So, so far, we were approaching to making a artificial imagery by basically projecting light back to the world. But what we should be doing is more like talking to the eye or the visual system to create the mental image of the 3D world which we should see. It should appear like this. Whenever we focus on our hands, we would like to see the content sharp and the far blurred and vice versa. So the question is, of course, how to do that? And there was a great amount of efforts already since times of Magic Leap. They started with multifocal displays, two planes. Now it is continued by light field, uh, light space technologies with four planes. There were efforts on, a, or are efforts on a very focal displays based on eye tracking, usually uh, progressed by Facebook reality labs. And of course, holographic displays such as those by VVTQ, which are of course the ultimate solution, but also very difficult to deliver. And that's why we do light field, because we believe this is a very practical, full solution which can be delivered soon. So you may know, or we may know the light field displays from classical big panels, which typically use normal display with lens array on top of it, which project different pixels to different directions. The problem of the big panels is the enormous inefficiency of the process, because the vast majority of the unique image information is shining to no one's eyes. This can be overcome by near eye projection. So light field projected directly to the eye doesn't waste the information. Practically all the rendered and projected information is delivered to the retina. And this is how we do it. We are projecting sequence of high spatial resolution images to the eye through an array of viewpoints. And each image provides slightly different perspective of the scene which you, you should see in front of you. And we project 6,000 such images every second. So at the end, the composed image is really as natural as it can be or as, as far as the human vision is concerned. So you can focus at the bird close next to your head or far. So normally, light field is associated with, with enormous amount of computation and data. Each time we speak to someone, this is the first question. Can it be calculated real time and so on? But 
here I would like to say it's not only possible to calculate it, but Lightfield doesn't need more of anything compared to flat imagery. It doesn't need more computation, more data to deliver it. The bottleneck in the visualization pipeline is actually the eye, it just need to be delivered correctly. So I mentioned 6,000 frames per second, six kilohertz, which of course sounds like enormous amount of data, but each of these frames is actually very poor color quality, one or two bits. But they build together full color quality. This one is around two million color levels. So this is an authentic footage taken by a camera that is looking inside one of our first prototypes. When you see the changing focus, that's entirely physical effect happening inside the camera. So there is no feedback, there is no information where the camera is focused. The focal depth is already baked in the projected light. You also don't see any pixelation because you basically see in this case around 30 screens slightly overlapping each other. And then I said, okay, each of these images should provide slightly different perspective of the scene. So it again sounds like a lot of computation. But again, this is not really true. So as you can see here, we are really shooting slightly different image to different viewpoint. But you may notice that these images are almost identical. It's just a very small shift between the close and far objects. And in fact, in our rendering pipeline, we take just a single viewpoint with a depth map and a history and extrapolate all the other viewpoints. So the total cost of the computation is practically the same as for flat imagery with very small overhead in percent. Okay. So the speed, of course, provides the image practically continuously. You don't see uh, any flicker. And we can look at the, uh, the mechanism also from other point of view. So for example, the pixel on the butterfly needs to be delivered to your eye. And what the system does, basically distributes the color information, the finite number of rays, in our case between 20 and 30, and then it is assembled by the eye on the retina again, and only then the color matters. So we don't need more color information than the pixel actually has. But of course, this is provided for different distances at the same time, that's the main difference. And there are now few advantages. Because we can form the light field, we can also transform the light field, which means we can substitute digitally your prescription lenses. The high frame rate is also advantage by itself because we have 100 times faster sequence of images bombarding your eye. So this basically allows us to project a flying bullet without any motion blur. So now I will show you what we have and what you can see in our booth 100. So we are welcome to, to try. So this is an AR headset. It's evaluation kit, but it has a full hand tracking, spatial tracking, and of course, real-time interaction. And this is what you can see through it. So again, this is entirely authentic footage. We took a camera and put it behind the combiner. There is no computer graphics added. And again, pay attention to the changing focus. So now everything far is blurred because the camera is focused on the first planet, and you can read the text next to it, which is not possible in devices with a flat screen somewhere farther. And of course, when you focus farther, you get the natural response in your eye. Again, there is no eye tracking, there is no information about the camera. The depth is already baked in the projected light field. We have over 50 degrees field of view and 200 nits in this prototype, but improving it is actually not uh, critically problematic. So again, still photos from the same scene. You can really read the text in 25 centimeters from you. You can change the focus and see the effect as you would normally expect from the real world, real things. And of course, the headset is big, so we are working on scaling down the projection system. So we are designing our own modulator, just six times six millimeters with one megapixel running binary at up to eight kilohertz, but six kilohertz is okay. We have a tape out in March and first samples should be in August. And we are doing also our own light field driver, which is very specific image processing. We cannot buy it, we have to make it. This is of course partly the problem. This is not a modular system. We cannot buy driver, we cannot buy combiner, we cannot buy modulator, we have to make it. But in this stage of industry, being integrated is actually advantage. 
But of course, we have to be compatible with the rest of the ecosystem. And as I mentioned, we are already extracting the image information from existing sources. So we are compatible with OpenXR. We can take practically any source and make a light field out of it at no extra cost. And possibly most importantly, we can't use waveguides. Waveguides kill the focal depth. So we have to use and make our own combiner. And here we made a holographic combiner. Again, you can see it in our booth 100, which is projecting not point to point as Intel Wound did or North did, but we have big eye box with many viewpoints. So the demo has only 12, but there is no issue to make more. This has over 95% transparency and 50% reflective efficiency. And of course, on top of it, we can place the hologram on the classical lens. So it's compatible with classical lens manufacturing. You need just one more step to put the film on top of it. And we also made a light field VR headset, just because why not? It looks a little bit different. Again, you can try it in our booth. And this is what you will see inside. So now it looks like quite normal content until you realize that now the display is out of focus until the camera focuses on it. But then the hand is out of focus, the finger. So again, you need to change focus on those 20 centimeters. This is actually really a hand-tracked real hand and displayed in front of you. So again, pay attention to the changing focus between the finger and the display. No eye tracking, no information about the viewer. It's always there and no extra cost to make it. So here are some still photos from different scenes just to show you the clarity of the text and then the change of focus on the camera behind. So here and back. So I spoke about revolution or typically it's called disruption and it's clear that AR is a disruption of classical flat screen market, right? It's very different. And obviously it is coming from different steps. So first more like a VR and then AR. But the disruption comes because we are providing literally a new dimension to display technology. And here I dare to say that as soon as the classical approach with flat screens is saturated, when it is good enough and there is basically no way, additional way of improvement of th in this direction, the displays with a true depth will make the new disruption, possibly three, four years later. So that's all from me. I would like to thank or show you our team of 20, uh, which stand behind this project. And that's all from me. Thank you very much.